Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have a hankering for a pineapple upside down cake and I bought everything to make it. So we're gonna make a pineapple upside down cake today. Gotta get the lid off my sour cream here. Um, this is easy to make. I haven't made one in like, I don't know, 35 years it seems like, but I've just had the hankering from one. Um, but today I'm gonna share with you my recipe for one. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, as you can see in here in this little um, bowl, I've got um, about four, four and a half uh, tablespoons of butter, semi-melted. Got my sugar packed on down here. What we're going to do is we're just going to add this uh, brown sugar right in this butter here, and we're just going to combine it really well. I probably should have used a bigger bowl. I'm not really sure what I was thinking. But we'll get it mixed together, won't we? That is perfect, nothing hard about that. Now what we're gonna be using um, pan-wise is my little nine inch pan. You can use nine inch, eight inch, uh, whatever. You could use one of the bigger nine by 13s, but if you do, then you need to, I don't know, like time and a half, do the recipe like, I wouldn't really say double it, but I would do it like at least a recipe and a half of it to do um, the bigger cake. But I've sprayed this liberally with um, non-stick cooking spray. And then what you're going to do is just, once you get this well combined, you're just going to lay this in the bottom of your pan here. Just pour it out into the bottom of your pan. And this is going to create a nice caramelized type um, top of your cake. And it's going to be so, so good. Go ahead and preheat your oven to, I don't know why I'm using that. Go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. I'm gonna get every bit of that. This is one of the things that makes it so good. The the top of the well, it's the bottom of the cake, but it's really gonna be the top of the cake by the time we're done with it. Just kind of smooth it all around into your pan there. oven is already ready that was quick sometimes it seems to take longer than other times all right so I need another bowl and I'm not going to get in one of my glasses so we'll just use one of the ones in the top cabinet here one of my little trusty plastic bowls and what you're going to add to this is you're going to add your left my butter in the microwave your softened butter, you're gonna add about a half a cup of like really softened butter. And this is kind of like a butter cake recipe almost, so you, you wanna make sure that you use, you know, the good butter. Use real butter for this. I'm just gonna kind of mash that down. See how nice and soft that is. And then we're gonna add our sugar to this. And we're just gonna add um, about three-fourths to uh, a whole cup of sugar. And you're just going to combine this. Again, I probably should have used a bigger bowl. Let's go ahead and add two eggs. And you want to make sure that they're at room temperature. I've had these eggs sitting out for um, probably about an hour, hour and a half on my countertop. Toss those in there. And I think at this point, I'm gonna switch up to a whisk. And we're just gonna whisk this together. We're going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm so excited. Like I said, I haven't had this in forever. Whisk that in. And then you're also going to add about the sour cream open. Oh, 
a nice um, fourth to maybe a half a cup of sour cream. Now, this is not the traditional way to make the um, pineapple upside down cake, but I like to add I like to add sour cream into my cakes sometimes. Sometimes I'll sneak it in there because it just adds such, um, you know, a richness to it. Makes it absolutely amazing. Now we're also going to add, this is, get a little off there. This is a can of the, I hope that's a piece of pineapple in there. Um, just sliced pineapples in their juice. Well, I guess I better hold it down there where you can see it. Um, a can of the sliced pineapples in their juice. And we're going to add some of this juice right into this uh, wet mixture here. We're going to add about a half a cup. And that's going to replace um, any milk or cream that you may use. It's going to give the cake a, you know, a nice pineapple flavor. See, I told you that to come together. All right, now we're going to start on our dry ingredients. And I'm going to sift this because it'll make it'll make the cake, um, you know, just a lot more airier. In here, I've got one and three fourths cup of all-purpose flour. I've got um, a teaspoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. I just went ahead and combined them because it'll help mix them, um, you know, as I'm sifting it, and they can just all all sift together in there. Look at that. You see how fine that becomes if you sift your flour? Okay, before we start adding the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients together, we're going to go ahead and start layering our pieces of pineapple um, onto our cake here. Well, we're not going to layer them. We're going to place them on there. Now, you could use fresh pineapple if you wanted to, but who wants to get all the trouble, right? And just place them side by side into your pan here. One, two, three, four. Should be able to get seven pieces in there. That's typically what I can get. Kind of scooch that over. Just kind of move it around. And then one's going to go right on top. Or right in the middle. Look at that. Now, if you want to be super duper fancy, I don't have enough pineapples to do it. I might. I don't think that I do. But um, you could cut your other pieces of pineapple in half, and you could just kind of lay them on the sides there. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I wonder how many pieces of pineapple I got. Oh, wow. Let's go ahead and be fancy. Might as well make it pretty, huh? Because I think I have enough pineapples in there. So I'm just going to cut these in half. And then I'm just going to kind of place them, if you can see, just a couple of them on the sides there. I don't know if I got enough. One, two, three. Oh, I do. Look at that. One can of pineapples. And it will make a perfect, perfect pineapple upside down cake. All right. And then you're going to add your maraschino cherries. If you wanted to add some, like some walnuts, you know, in there, that would be perfectly fine. They're good with, really good with walnuts in there as well. And we're just going to place one cherry. 
I'm not using that little one. And each of the little pineapples there. Now I'm going to tell you this right now while I'm thinking about it. Um, some people leave their pineapple upside down cake, you know, out. I like to put mine in the refrigerator because I like mine cold. I don't, I don't like it room temperature. I think it's a better cake if it's um, a cold cake, if you know what I'm saying. There we go. Look how pretty that is. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and combine our dry ingredients with our wet ingredients. And you know what? I should have had these bowls backwards. I should have had the wet ingredients in this one and the dry ingredients in this one. But I didn't do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start adding our wet ingredients into our dry. Normally it's backwards, the dry into the wet, but my bowl's bigger. So I'm just going to incorporate that. And then just stir it around. Now I'm just going to pour that right into my pan there. Sorry guys, I'm right handed so... Now we're just going to smooth that around. Make sure you get it nice and even. Now these typically take a little bit longer to bake than your average cake that bakes about, you know, 27, 28 minutes. We're going to pop this in there and I'm going to start checking it in about 33, 34 minutes. It might bake for 35 to 40 minutes and then I'll let you know exactly how long that it baked for. Alright, I want you to look at my uh, pie, my cake. <laughs> Started called a pie. Um, it was in the oven for about 40 minutes to be exact because it is a little thicker. And it takes a little bit longer to bake. So what you need to do is let it sit out at probably for about five minutes before you attempt put it onto a plate. But you want to take a knife and go around the edges there just to make sure it's all nice and loosened up. I'm telling you, it smells so good. And then you just take your whatever you're serving your um you know it's going to be your serving platter for your cake i like to just when i bake these i like to just put them on like regular plates because again i like to cover mine and put it in the refrigerator so you just place that on um, your plate your plate right on top just like that and then you're just going to flip it and hope it turns out look at that absolutely beautiful did you see how pretty that was? I'm not even going to lie. I was praying the whole time that it would come out perfect. And it did. Because sometimes it don't. Sometimes it gets stuck. But it didn't this time. It looks absolutely amazing. I want you to look at it again. I'm telling you what. If I can do this, you can do this. So simple. So easy. And the key to this is not letting it sit in your pan um, for longer than five or six minutes to let it cool. Because the... Um, brown sugar that's on top it's gonna be so good um, it, it'll start thickening up and it might stick to that pan so I'm not gonna cut into this this is gonna be our dessert tonight it's too pretty I don't even want to eat it it's so pretty I can't wait to dig into this I hope you like this recipe I hope you try it soon you know I love you guys so very much I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one Bye.